Hello YouTube, I thought I'd create a quick tutorial showing you how I created this type of ground material and how I can get some type of ice or water inside the cracks. So I'm just going to create a new substance. I'm going to make sure it's PBR metal roughness and I'm just going to call it ground. I'm just going to keep the resolution at 2K. So I'm just going to close my other graphs right now just so it's not taking up memory. Okay, so now to create the ground area, like the mud, I'm just going to press spacebar and I'm going to type in clouds. And for this I'll choose clouds too. So the dark bits can be the recess bits and the white bits can be the areas that come up off the ground. So just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to plug this into the normal map. And I'm also going to plug it into the height. Now you can't plug it in the normal math directly because it's a grayscale. You have to have a normal math node in between. In the new version of Substance this is done automatically. But if you don't have this just press spacebar and type in normal. And then you'll be able to get a normal node. So with this clouds node I'm just going to do a histogram scan and with this histogram scan I'm just going to change the position and the contrast just so we get some darker recesses so you just use this to control the positioning so how high how deep kind of thing so I'm just going to kind of leave it at that and I'm going to go in the clouds and just do a random seed that way we just have a, a bit of variation. You can change the scale and the disorder if you want to. Now I'm going to reduce the scale back down. Okay, so now you've got the clouds. This can act as our height. So I'll just plug that back in because I've undone it. And to see your height information, because right now it's just normal, you want to go to material, default, and then the one with the tick on and make sure tessellation selected and if you left click this you get this menu here so I'm just going to bring my scale up to about 4 and just increase the tessellation factor so now you can see that we have a bumpy surface and if you can't see this very well you can change the light round holding control shift and right click it also might help if you change your uniform base colour. So you can just move this up and down. Just so you can kind of see what you're doing. <coughs> so now that you have that, we want to create the water in the recess areas. So there's this cool node, I think it's quite new to Substance Designer. If you just type in water, you get water level. So here it asks you for the height, so we're just going to plug in this grayscale. It asks you for the normal, so I'm just going to bring this normal here and plug that into the normal. For the roughness, uh, roughness is quite important for PBR materials to make sure they look good. So with this I'm going to create a roughness, so we're just going to get our levels and with roughness, white is rough, black is not rough, so black's more shiny. And we want a more shiny material if it's going to be a wet type of mud. So you can just change the sliders here, so I'm just pulling the black out. So the overall material comes a bit lighter. <coughs> and then you can also bring this side in as well to make it a bit darker. And then of the, the the middle controls, kind of the grey balance. So, as I said, because we want it quite shiny, we're going to want it fairly dark. So I'm just going to bring the darks in. I'm just going to bring this up as well, just to decrease the contrast a bit. And we're going to plug that into the roughness. 
And in the water level, I'm just going to untick metallic because we don't need metallic. And ambient occlusion, I'm just going to use our height and press spacebar and type in AO or ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion. So now we'll have this ambient occlusion node, it's converted our height into an ambient occlusion. So you can just change these values here to your liking, increase the samples, and I'm just going to plug that in. Right, now for colour. You'll probably just want to spend a lot more time on colour, but I'm just going to search dirt on Google, and now we've got some dirt. And what you can do is, if you press spacebar, get a gradient map, gradient editor, pick gradient, and then hold left click and drag along an image, it selects all the colours of that image. And if you want, sometimes you get too many points and your image can become very noisy. As you can see this is quite noisy and swirly. What you can do is you can reduce this precision, say down to like 0.1, and then as you can see it's reduced the number of points. And then you can just sample whatever images you have until you get something that you like. For the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to say that's it. And then we're going to plug that into base colour. Now these outputs, I'm just going to plug them back into our outputs for our graph just so we can see what's going on. So base colour into base colour, normal into normal roughness into roughness etc. And as you can see now we've added that we've got this area here and it looks like it's in water. <coughs> so we have that because this water levels node has created that and if we double click it we can see the controls within it. So and adjust the water level so make it lower or higher so it's like more flooded or just little pockets of water water darkness so you'd want this pretty dark if you're wanting deep puddles but sometimes it doesn't work with the height map you have and it goes around the outside so I'm just going to keep that back, back there uh, wetness distance, that's how far the wetness runs over. So if we increase this, more of the surface is going to have splash wetness. So it's going to become darker. As you can see, that water is kind of creeping up there. So I'm just going to reduce that a bit. Change the depth blur amount. So if we've got surface detail in here, you can change how much it blurs that detail underneath and the opacity but because I used the histogram scan we don't really have much detail in there because we made it quite dark but I made it very dark just so we can kind of see the results that we're going to get however in your final model you'll want a bit more noise variation in there and then under that is the sludge colour so kind of the colour of your water you can change this to whatever you like. We've got sludge depth, so how deep it goes. So as we can see this spans out the areas. Or if we reduce that, it becomes more enclosed. I'm just going to keep that around 0.5 and then the opacity of the edges. Just choose whatever looks right for you. And then frost, this is a very cool feature that I really like. So if we bump this up to 1, we'll get an ice effect like this. And you can increase the intensity of it, reduce the intensity. So we've just kind of got ice crackling over, like the water is starting to freeze. We can increase the amount of cracks. We can decrease. So I find that feature very cool.
but if I kind of just turn that down again, maybe add a little bit. And there we'll go, we we'll kind of have our mud floor with our water pockets. And I think it gives a very cool result. And obviously you can develop this further so you can add the kind of pebbles to your material. You can add tree branch sticks, just whatever you can think of. But I just want to quickly show you this really cool feature that I found in Substance Designer. And I hope you found it helpful. If you thought this video was helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.